Greetings, adventurers. This is DM Kurt. And if you've been listening to the uh, role-playing game news in the last week or so, you may have heard that Rebellion Unplugged has purchased the rights and IP to Tunnels and Trolls from Flying Buffalo Press. Now, Tunnels and Trolls was put out originally in 75, 1975, right after Dungeons and Dragons. And it never really got that big. It, you know, not... D&D big. It was always second, third, fourth, fifth in line, whatever. As opposed to, say, Pathfinder and Call of Cthulhu, which at various years have outsold D&D, especially internationally. Okay, so I go to Rebellion Unplugged's website, and what did I find but a list of frequently asked questions that the marketing director put together as part of their PR blitz. And skimming through it, I got to the last section the most important line in all of this was, there's going to be a new edition and it's gonna be fun. Perfect, tell me more. Uh, no, yeah, that's, the end of the, that's the end of the line, uh, they don't tell me more. Okay, okay. So I go over to drive through RPG. I notice that there's a 2015 edition of Tunnels and Trolls and it's, you know, a fairly hefty book that I could purchase. Yeah, that's cool. I found the 1975 PDF for Next to Nothing. I got that. And for free, I got the 2007 uh, Quick Start Rules PDF. And I will go through these two PDFs. Because I figure that the general scheme of the rules to this game are going to inform me as to what the new edition might sort of be like. It's going to give me a clue. Uh, first thing you should know is that Flying Buffalo put out 20 or more solo adventures for Tunnels and Trolls. And they're organized a lot like a choose your own adventure book. That's kind of cool. I mean, when I was a kid, you know, teenager, I loved choose your own adventure books. And this is kind of choose your own adventure D&D &D style or tunnels and troll style to be more precise cool and of course those are going to be dirt cheap as pdfs you know so i look at the game mechanics and i look at uh, the style the format okay the 75 the 1975 version obviously that needed uh that needed an update for style reasons okay just things are different man it's almost 50 years you know Cool. But the gist of it's the same. It's a lot like basic D&D. You got uh, warriors and thieves and magic users. Didn't see any uh, clerics, although the uh, big thick book from 2015 and the uh, uh, new upcoming edition might have those. So, okay. We'll not worry about a lack of clerics. The game mechanics that I noticed is that, so if you want to play a non-human, their suggestions were that you roll your attributes and certain attributes would be multiplied by 1.5 or multiplied by point uh, multiplied by uh, two-thirds or multiplied by half depending you know there'd be some would go higher some would go lower and that would be multiplied by a fraction instead of uh, plus one plus two minus one you know it's a minor it's a minor change. It's just kind of interesting. Uh, attribute and saving throw checks. Okay. So this is different. You have 2d6 to work with. You roll 2d6. You know how in Monopoly you get an extra turn if you roll doubles? Well, you roll your 2d6, and if you roll doubles, you add another 2d6 onto that. And if those 2d6 are doubles... Well, then you roll another 2d6 on top of that until you stop rolling doubles, at which point you have however many dice, whatever number. If your number is four or less, meaning you had to have rolled a one and a two or a one and a three to get there, then it's an automatic fail. If it's anything else, then you take your number rolled and you add the appropriate attribute could be strength for shoving someone, it could be dexterity for climbing a wall, and saving throws are going to be based off of an attribute called luck, which is only used for saving throws. So, 
luck attribute plus your die roll. And you're aiming for rolling high and hitting whatever target number the DM gives you. Okay. Got your uh, solo games or DM run multiplayer games, depending. Cool. Uh, combat is different. So every weapon has dice that it does. So a quarterstaff is 4d6. Uh, Greatsword 6d6. There's no rolling initiative. Both sides take a two minute turn instead of six second turns with initiatives rolled. It's simultaneous. What you do is you roll your dice. Uh, 66, 46, whatever. You add certain bonuses. The rules will give you bonuses for higher attributes. Everybody on your side does the same. And your side takes all of their points that they have rolled, adds them all up. Bad guys do the same thing. You compare the two. You take the higher, subtract the lower. Keep that remainder. So that's what the winning side does in damage subtract the the total armor ratings of whatever armor the other side's wearing so armor works as damage reduction in the defensive manner and whatever's left over after the armor soaks it that's what y'all take there are no hit points it's constitution so if you have a constitution of 15 you have the equivalent of 15 hit points your constitution is lowered temporarily from 15 to whatever hopefully not all the way to zero in which case you're dead or unconscious depending on the specific edition of tunnels and trolls we're talking about in which case consult the pdf consult the book don't come looking at me this because there's no roll to hit and because there's no initiative order to go through and because the players have uh, sort of a basic uh, number of things they can do, you don't have somebody that's going to say, okay, I'm going to use two-thirds of my movement, do an attack, take the other third of my movement, do this bonus action, and maybe, and I'm going to hold my reaction for later. Meanwhile, because I hit and moved, they get to use their reaction. Now, you don't have that. I think the only thing that's going to slow this down is that when your side takes damage, you gotta decide uh, how to divvy that up appropriately. I think that's gonna be the only point that slows combat. Uh, in the, I believe it was the 1975 version, there was an attribute called wizardry. In that, you know, if you're not a wizard, throw your lowest roll into that and don't worry about it. If you are a wizard, you want that as, as high as possible because that's basically your spell points for the day. If you had a 15 for wizardry, well, then you have 15 spell points or total spell levels you can cast for the day. They'll go down towards, towards zero and regenerate maybe the end of the day or overnight, however. Okay, and they, I think it was the 2007 one, uh, the wizard casts off of his strength score, so that's a little weird. Uh, experience points was done a little differently as you gain levels or gain experience points or adventure points I should say you can cash those in to raise attributes because everything is done on attribute based roles and you don't have these secondary uh, back out charts and such secondary uh, skill spell uh, spell list per level equals this many spell slots of each type you know kind of thing so it should be uh, pretty quick to roll up characters and just just grab your sheet and go is this what their new edition is going to be I have no idea I don't think anybody does but them but that's a good indicator of what it might be anyway Hope you found this uh, forecasting of what Tunnels and Trolls uh, new edition might be. I'll uh, put some links down in the description or a pinned comment. Uh, let me know what you all think. DM Kurt out.